question for you. Why do we have MAC addresses and IP addresses? As an example, on this phone, I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network. I see a Wi-Fi address or MAC address as well as an IP address. Why do we have that on both Wi-Fi as well as Ethernet? And do all networks use MAC addresses? So the answer is, firstly, no, not all networks use MAC addresses. In the old days, we had serial interfaces like this and serial cables like this. So we would connect the serial cable to this serial interface on the router, and this would be connected to another router as an example, or to a WAN connection. So in the old days, we had serial interfaces like this used for leased lines, point-to-point -point connections between, say, a site in London and a site in Manchester, as an example, or as an example from New York to San Francisco point-to-point -point link. They didn't use MAC addresses. Ethernet, however, and Wi-Fi uses MAC addresses. That's the way that we identify devices on a network. On serial interfaces such as these, it was a point-to-point -point link. In other words, we were going from one device to another. We didn't have to have a MAC address to identify multiple devices on a single network because there were only two people communicating. In a point-to-point -point link, if I'm, for example, connected to this interface and you connected to that interface, if I send traffic, you're gonna get it. If you send traffic, I'm gonna get it. There's no one else on the network. We don't need individual identifiers for each other because I know if I send the traffic to you, you're gonna get it. And if you send the traffic to me, I'm gonna get it. But on Ethernet and Wi-Fi, it doesn't work like that because many devices can be connected to the same network. In our example here in Packet Trace, I have three devices connected to the same switch. So we need an identifier of each device in Ethernet on the network. We need to uniquely identify devices connected to the Wi Fi network or to the Ethernet network. So old routers, as an example, had serial interfaces like this, as well as Ethernet interfaces. Modern routers tend to have Ethernet only. Ethernet has become the de facto standard for most connections. So we have Wi-Fi or Ethernet for the LAN or local area network, as well as for the WAN or wide area network. We typically use Ethernet. As an example here at home, I have fiber to my house. That is an Ethernet connection. You may have a different type of technology like DSL or something else, but a lot of us are using Ethernet to our homes with fiber connections. There may be differences. You could be using Starlink as an example, but Ethernet has become the most popular connection method in the world today. So you'll come across Ethernet everywhere. So in our little topology, this laptop has a MAC address of 0001 followed by a bunch of ones. I can see that again by typing ipconfig slash all. There's the physical address or MAC address of the device. On this laptop, if I go to config as an example, fast Ethernet zero, there's the MAC address of PC2. Same on the server. If I go to config, fast Ethernet zero, there's the MAC address of the server. I showed you previously how to manually change the MAC addresses, so that's why they're simple to read. The switch learns where devices are in the topology when they send traffic, and then it populates its MAC address table. But for now, I want to show you something else. How do devices know the MAC addresses of other devices in the network? How do they discover MAC addresses? Switch learns the MAC addresses when traffic is sent through the network, but how does Laptop 1, as an example, know the MAC address of the server? Well, that uses a protocol called ARP. So if I type ARP-A, we can actually see a mapping between the IP address of the server and its MAC address that was dynamically learnt. When a device sends traffic into the network and it doesn't know the MAC address of the other device, it says, who's got this MAC address? And basically discovers the MAC address of the other person. Let's make this real. So on that computer at the top there, I'll show you what this physically looks like in the real world. So on this computer, I'll open up PowerShell. You could use CMD if you prefer. ARP-A shows a whole bunch of MAC addresses in the ARP cache of the PC. If you did this on your own PC, you'd see something similar. You'd see a whole bunch of MAC addresses if you connected to a network. This device has multiple interfaces, so don't let that confuse you. Let's focus on this interface. This is the IP address used to connect to our little network here. It's learned about these two MAC addresses dynamically. So as an example, it's learning that 192.168.1.3 is using this MAC address. Now, I could clear the ARP cache by using the command ARP-D. Notice we told that you need elevation to do this. In other words, you need to run this as an administrator. So what I'll do is run CMD here and right click and say run as administrator. So I'm gonna say yes to run that as admin. So ARP dash A again, shows me the various MAC addresses, including the MAC address for 192.168.1.3.
if I type op D now, and then op A again, notice that kind of information has disappeared. I see some other static MAC addresses here, but I don't see 192.168.1.3. Basically what happens is when I send traffic into the network, so as an example, I connect to the web server running on 192.168.1.3, a protocol called up or address resolution protocol is used to discover the MAC address of that device. So notice that now appears in the op cache of my PC. This PC has learned the MAC address of this laptop by sending what's called a broadcast into the network saying, who's got this IP address? And then that PC replies back with its MAC address. Now, Packet Tracer allows us to see this really nicely. What I'll do on this laptop is delete the op cache. So op-d, op-a, no op entries are found on this laptop. What I'm gonna do now is use simulation mode to show you what's happening in the network. Now, please note, when you go to simulation mode, click show all none. You can see all of this is visible, but I'm gonna say none to make none of it visible. So notice show all none allows me to see everything or nothing. So I'm gonna set it to nothing and then I'm gonna edit the filters to only show me op under IP version four and then under miscellaneous, make this bigger and I'm gonna look for HTTP and set that. So the only two events that I'm looking for are op and HTTP address resolution protocol and hypertext transport protocol. Back on this PC, op-a shows us that there are no op entries in the op cache of the PC. But what I'll do now is open up a web browser, just like I did on the physical computers, and I'm gonna browse to 192.168.1.3. So before I press go, nothing's happening in the network, press go, and suddenly we see a little packet being sent into the network. And if I hover my mouse over it, it tells me this is an op packet. So if I click on that, you can see a bunch of information here. I'm gonna talk about the TCP IP model and OSI model in a lot of detail in a separate video. For now, don't worry too much about all of these layers. We're gonna cover this in a lot more detail. All I want you to see is in the outbound PDU or protocol data unit, again, we'll cover that in a lot more detail later. You can see that the source MAC address is shown here. This PC is sending messages into the network saying, and if we scroll down, it's saying, who has this IP address? Notice the target MAC address is a bunch of zeros. Source IP address is this, source MAC address is this, target IP address is this, target MAC address is a bunch of zeros. We're gonna cover this in a lot of detail. You need to learn about the TCP IP model and OSI model before we can talk about all these different layers. But I want you to see here, it says ethernet and then it says op. The PC is basically asking who has got this MAC address. Now that goes into the network. So I'll press forward here, hits the switch, if I look at the inbound PDU, the destination MAC address is a bunch of Fs. That's a broadcast, which means it should be sent to everyone. The switch is gonna send this to everyone because the PC is asking who's got this and we don't know who's got this. So we wanna know from everyone on the network who's got this MAC address. So now when I press forward or continue, notice that the packet goes both to the server and this laptop. This laptop is gonna drop the packet, hence the cross there, because if we click on inbound PDU or protocol data unit, the PC is asking for this IP address. That's not the IP address of this PC. This PC has uh, this IP address, 192.168.1.2, or the laptop has that IP address. So this is gonna be dropped by the PC, but the server is not gonna drop it because the server has that IP address. The server is configured with this IP address. So it's gonna reply. So hence we've got an inbound, so that's the message from the switch to the server, and we have an outbound message. In the outbound message, the server is replying back to the laptop. So on the inbound PDU, the source MAC address is a bunch of ones, that's the MAC address of this laptop. Destination is a broadcast, but on the reply back, the destination is the laptop because the server has learnt the MAC address of the laptop and the source MAC address is the server. So basically, if I go back here, when it hits the switch, it goes both to the laptop on the right, so laptop two, and the server, this gets dropped. But the server is now gonna reply back with its MAC address. And if we look at that message, we can see that the source MAC address is the server, destination MAC address is the PC. Basically, the server is saying, 
PC with IP address 192.168.1.1. My IP address is 192.168.1.3. Server is replying back with its IP address. And if we send that back to the PC, what will happen on this PC is it'll learn that information and update its ARP cache. In other words, it's mapping between MAC address and IP address. Target is the local PC. Source is the server. The server is basically telling the PC its MAC address. So if we close the web browser down and we go to the CLI or command prompt and type ARP-A, notice the PC has learned the MAC address of the server. Previously, there were no ARP entries on the server. And now, once that's been done, a different message is sent into the network. And if I look at that on the switch, and I'm not going to bore you too much with this now, what you'll notice scrolling down here, we see Ethernet, and then we see IP, and then we see TCP, and then we see HTTP. So before the devices can communicate through HTTP, and in other words, through a web browser, we first have to learn the MAC addresses of the devices. So I'm going to set this to real time so that when I go back to the laptop and look at its command prompt, we can see again, the MAC address has been learned. So to summarize, and again, I'll cover this in more detail when I talk about the OSI model and the TCP IP model. What I want you to understand here is that certain technologies like Ethernet and Wi-Fi use MAC addresses. Those are required for communication on the local network. So we need to have MAC addresses when we communicate in an Ethernet network like this or on your Wi-Fi network. You will always see MAC address as well as IP address. IP addresses are typically used to connect to remote networks. MAC addresses are used to allow communication on the local network. So in your local subnet or your local network, and don't worry, there's some caveats here and some changes, which we'll talk about later. The idea is locally on the switch, the devices communicate using their MAC addresses on Ethernet. They also communicate using IP version 4. You could use another protocol like IP version 6. So in today's world, we typically see MAC addresses because we're using Ethernet or Wi-Fi and we see IP addresses, either IP version 4 or IP version 6 when hosts communicate with one another. We're going to explain a lot of this in more detail later, but the idea is you will see MAC addresses and IP addresses. The devices will learn the MAC addresses of other devices in the topology using a protocol called ARP or address resolution protocol that is used in Wi-Fi as well as on physical Ethernet. <laughs>